Hey there YouTube, this is the Marines Man. Um, I'm doing another a video today. This is on the Mosin and Gant right now. Uh, you've seen me shoot it a few times in, this, in the past. That's the stock up there. Right now the rifle is in this new stock which I got, which is called the CBRPS Bullpup uh, Standard Mosin and Gant stock. And what it does is it does basically what it's, it uh, claims it makes it shorter. Um, it also, the center balance which is where the CB comes for in the name. I'm not exactly sure what all the what the entire acronym is, but it's center balanced, which means if you hold it at the pistol grip, you can basically keep it balanced, which means, which is a, uh, which I like. Hold on. It's a bit windy out and chilly, which is why I have gloves on. Basically why it chose this stock was because I've been looking for a way to make the Mosin and Amp better. It's a, obviously it's a military, it's a, uh, Milserp rifle. I mean, there's not much to it other than that, but I've seen people get some good accuracy with this. And what they usually do is the usual routine is to, um, when they when they sporterize it, is generally they're going to put a, they're going to glass bed or bed the receivers in some way. They're going to get a lighter trigger in there. They're going to get a bent bolt, and they're going to put a scope mount on it. And generally, you're able to hit pretty good. I mean, even with the cheap most, they're not cheap most. I guess they're all cheap. Even with the less accurate ones, you're still able to hit out to two, three, four hundred yards without any problems. But that scope is what I've been looking for a lot. And then a few side things that I wanted on a stock that I was going to get or build, but I decided to get one, which is going to be a pistol grip, which this has a bipod or like some way to attach a bipod on the original stock. There's no rail or anything, obviously, no way to attach it. Here, there's a short Picatinny rail to put on. Um. The rifle got shortened. That to me is awesome because I don't like swinging around a 48 inch rifle. 40 inches is much better. So uh, it takes out, or 38, 9, so it takes out about 9 inches of rifle, which is enough in my opinion. I mean, you could obviously still shorten it up and make it even shorter if you wanted to. That would be kind of cool. I don't know, maybe in the future. Then I wanted, I did not, I wanted the scope mount, of course. Now, I did not want to have to modify my bolt in any way, because first, that's extra money, and second, it doesn't, I don't think is that necessary. I think it does the job the way it is. Would it be nice? Sure, but I'm not in the mood to do that right now. And I also wanted to be able to be returned to its original configuration, if need be. I don't actually have a reason to do that. I just like the original one as, as well. So, I mean, other than the fact that I want it to be like that, which is why I was willing to put in the uh, extra mods, if need be, but I'd rather have it be able to return to original configuration so it still has some uh still has resemblance to the original russian one next up the installation of this stock it's claimed to be a drop-in stock which it more or less is i mean there's a few little things here and there that have problems it comes to you from it basically three separate sections it comes this piece comes as a whole this carry handle is re not there there's two screws here and two screws on the other that get removed and then you have your side plates, which come off. This is a uh, spring recoil pad. And then you have your um, trigger piece, which is on the inside that runs all the way back. So I'm gonna do a quick takedown of the stock real quick, and I'll just kind of show you what's going on. Hold on one second. All right, so. This is the rifle, as you can see. The best way to access this is with an allen wrench hold on let me zoom into the stock real quick all right here we go and then all i'm going to do is just remove the rear screws so i want to show you the inside of this it's kind of cool the way i have it set up or they have it set up one and i'm going to get to these screws in a second I'd adjust it because the original way they set it up was uh, wrong. Even though that's the original way they set it up, when they sent it to me, it still didn't work. Because of that screw right there. Now something I do not like about this stock is the fact that in order to take it apart like I'm doing now, you need to have an Allen wrench. And they're obviously not the most common things to have on hand. So just keep that in mind. So this is the uh, all it is. It's aluminum. 
um, just comes up when you rotate the bolt, which I'll show you later. And there you go. Now the inside, basically what happens is the trigger is runs up to here. You pull it, and there's this piece that pulls on the actual trigger behind you. Now the installation of this, the first thing that I had to do was you put slide the rifle in. They have a right. They have a uh, video that shows you how to do this. You put the rifle in, and you put the magazine up to it, and then you put the first screw in. Do the same thing with the back, and you put the second screw in on the top, which you can see right there. Now this is all great except for the fact that this piece right here, this is plastic. Um, this is aluminum. This takes most of the recoil, and then it goes straight along the receiver back into your shoulder. But this is out of spec. They made this too thin. So when I tightened the screw all the way down, I was still having a lot of wobble and shake back there. So I had to put in a washer in the back to remedy that and make it a little bit, probably about, probably about two millimeters thicker. No, maybe about a millimeter thick. This way it um, cease all movement. Next, your they have a pin. This is the original trigger pin right here. Um, so, right, there you go, right there. And that goes right in here. You have to put theirs in, which is fine. That's a better quality pin. It's a little longer to make sure it doesn't slide out because that, in that stock, it's tight enough where you can just have the pin in and it will hit the wood back and forth and it won't slide around. But this is how they have designed. So, the next bit of installation that was a bit problematic, it took me forever to get this little block right here. This is adjustable, thank goodness, because originally, if you pulled the trigger, it'd be very loose it wouldn't be right up against it like that so it was up here originally and I had to adjust it so the whole thing would move back correctly and be tight same tolerances the next thing there's a mod that you can do which is a what is it you put a small washer just underneath this leaf spring I'm sure some of you've heard of it but it's for uh, it's supposed to lighten up the leaf spring a little bit and lighten up your trigger pull and I did it for a while and it worked fine except for the fact that when you put it in the stock there's not enough room because this piece is pushed is not quite as loose as it is in the uh, wood stock, so you have to take that modification out. And the fact that it's tighter is good; it means it'll get better accuracy. So I'm okay with that. It's supposed to be you're supposed to be able to fit a Timney trigger in it if you need to, according to the website. Um, maybe in the future. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just happy with everything. Next up, um, slide the bolt in real quick so you can see it work. Boom. Simple. And to release it, you pull the trigger, bolt comes out. You can keep it out for now, it's easier. So, the next bit, once you, these screws in here were originally that short one, and the stock, once again, it comes in pieces, so this part is separate, and this is separate, and those screws are the only thing in there. When those screws are in there by themselves, they're fine. But, in order to hold this down, it has to be on top, and you have to use those screws. And therefore, I needed to put the longer ones in from the back into the front and switch them around because otherwise they weren't going all the way through and they kept stripping out of me. Because so literally only using the last three or four threads to hold it in. And I did not like that at all. The next, which brings me to the next problem that I also had with this installation. They just, they did not put this CBRPS, did not make this correct. This screw hole used to look like that. Except the problem is that when you line this screw hole up, it's behind it's not far enough up so i had to move it by basically taking a dremel tool with a drill bit in it and then i just dragged the entire screw hole over until it lined up so i mean that part kind of sucked i was annoyed about that because i didn't i don't like putting holes in the metal but i mean even though it was already there i still it doesn't look as neat so i would suggest you probably going to need a dremel tool if you order one and this may also be due to the fact that each most again is a little bit different, but still it kind of sucked and it was annoying. Let's see, then uh, what do we got? Next up, when you tighten these down, so I'm gonna put this back on real quick. See, this lines up. Big screw. There. That's basically everything that there is to the internals, which is cool, because relatively simple. Go. That's in.
I also like how the trigger guard is nice and big because that means you can put your uh, gloved fingers in as you can see I have on right now. I mean it's not that cold so it wasn't quite going in. Hold on a sec. Oh, that's in. Oh that's in. Just wasn't quite going the way I thought it was. There we go. Oops. Now you can't tighten, that's the next thing, that you, with this uh, spring recoil pad, you cannot tighten it down too much, because otherwise, hold on, it's starting. If you tighten these screws down, actually like tight tight, it will not allow this spring recoil pad to operate at all, because it won't move. This right here slides right up against that metal. I mean, I suppose the only way you can fix that is by making a small little spacer washer that's real thin to go in that groove so it doesn't actually touch but I mean I guess it works it does what I need it to do so that's basically the installation it's relatively simple oh, my bad sorry I kicked the uh, iPod next the uh, now there's a few things that bother me about this I'm gonna get to the good in a second but the few things that are going to bother me is first, this recoil pad, notice the way it's oriented. It's, hold on. Yeah, see, so you tighten it up too much. I can't crush it. That's what I was talking about. So that obviously bothers me a bit. Yeah, definitely too much. There we go. Alright, there we go. So, see how it's only the bottom that moves and the top, it moves like this? Hold on, let me zoom out real quick. Alright, sorry, you couldn't even see that. So anyway, see how it only moves in, so it's only this bottom piece moving? The only problem with that is that'll cause the rest of the rifle to jump up. So if your cheek is on this piece of metal right here, that's going to be awfully painful because it's going to jump right in your face. Which brings me to the next thing. I'm going to put the bolt in real quick and let me show you something. Hold on. I really hate the wind right now. This in no way is a left-handed person stock in this configuration. Because righty, you're fine. Lefty, you've literally got a bolt in your face. And I feel like that'd be quite uncomfortable. So, I mean, that would just knock out a few teeth real quick. Make sure it's uncocked real quick. So that's a uh, bit of a problem I have. The next problem is the fact that this is very noisy and there's no way to really stick this down. On the plastic one that they originally sold, um, it, I saw this one guy put a magnet inside, which actually seemed to work, but I don't know how you can do this on that, do that on this one just because the way it's set up. He has a new design called the Cossack, which cuts down on weight, and it also eliminates this piece altogether, just a slot in it for the bolt to go. And, uh, I don't know, I kind of like that design better. Probably should have gotten it. Didn't. So, whatever. So, yes, the no uh, I did not like that. Just the noise bothers me. Next up was the, uh, the top rail. This rail right here, it is not spec with this rail up here. This is actually like Picatinny rail. It's metal and it's probably an aircraft grade aluminum. It's a legit Picatinny rail. This part up here I'm assuming was milled and you can see this is thicker than that which means scope rings that'll work on regular Picatinny rail do not work on this even though it's supposed to be Picatinny so I don't know what to do about that. I gotta some kind of find the right scope rings for that but it's just they're not standard I don't think. So if anyone knows where to get the correct scope rings for this, that would be awesome. <coughs> Next up, you've got, yeah, and the last part was you need the tools to get to the internals. So um, the next thing, the weight of the original is 8.2 pounds, which is the wood stock up there. It's 8.2 pounds. That's 
I mean, it's not too... That's pro, That's okay for a rifle. Except for the fact that there's absolutely nothing on it. It's just the wood rifle. So, alright, fine. That Most World War II rifles were about that weight. Eight something or other. This, however, is a bit heavier. It is, it is 10.2 pounds. That is a darn heavy rifle to be lugging around. Even It does offer a lot of capability and it shortens it. But still, 10.2 pounds. I feel like they could have cut maybe a couple ounces out of this by making, less, making the aluminum thinner in a few areas. And also, this whole piece could have been come up and just cut down all the way here. If they just got rid of this entire bottom section and just had it come up from the trigger guard and maybe put a thin Picatinny rail up there like they did on the top, I'd be happy with that. I'm not a huge fan of the folding grip. I mean, yeah, okay, it's nice to fold and grip, but I'd, I'd see it, I see it as kind of pointless. I'd rather be able to put my own grip on there and just have a single length of rail. Next, um, the length of the original was 48 inches in its configuration. This is 39. It makes it shorter. I like that about it. This is what it offers capability-wise, which I'm going to go into real quick. First up, the top rail, it's, uh, hold on, the top rail is alright, it offers, because it's at a lower set base than this, you can't line anything up with your optics unless you get some sort of riser, and even then it'd have to be pretty precise, I mean I suppose you could do it, but, I don't know, but something I did think about was, if you want, you could have your scope up here, and then you can get, they have 45 degree offsets that you can put on your Picatinny rail, and if you did that, I'm assuming you'd be able to put a red dot or something else on the side if you wanted to. Or you could put a, uh, you know, of course your light laser, whatever you want. And maybe the fact that it's lower is good if you want to put a laser and have it directly in line with the scope. It's up to you. But, um, so that's basically your only rail options. There's no, I don't think there's any way to add a rail on the side or this side. Maybe in the base over here. I mean, it seems, if you see on the inside, it seems pretty hollow, except that this is for the space... For that folding grip so I mean I don't know maybe you could but see, I mean if you see all that extra space in there I feel like you just wasted weight or extra weight next up these are made out of go over the materials real quick this is all aluminum back up this uh, these side plates are aluminum this is a polymer plastic of some sort I do not know what kind this is your uh, this is aluminum of course polymer lined with aluminum uh, polymer aluminum I do not have any idea what in the world these are made of I mean it seems somewhat seems pretty uh, solid but it's like a I mean I have no idea what the heck that is some kind of plastic I'm guessing well obviously it's plastic but other than that I have no idea then they have a uh, sling swivel stud points they have two of them uh, the first one is back here sorry uh, right there and the other one is up front right here that offers some sling capability There's, I wish they put one on the other side that would be awesome this way you could have dual uh, or put it on either side if you wanted to but they didn't once again so it leaves a few things to be wanted next up the uh, it offers the scope mount with no mods as I said already there's no modification to the bolt which I like but, I feel like it'd still be useful to get a bent bolt, just because if you're ha they have something called a speed bolt, and that moves the bolt up to here, comes out a little bit, and comes down about this far. This way, and it's flat, so it's, I'll, sh I'll roll in a picture if I can find one. But it comes up, and then it slides, it only picks up this uh, metal piece about that much, so you can still keep your cheek rest, and then it slides all the way back, and then you reload, of course. So that may be something to look into, we'll see. Uh, yes, lefties. There's a guy by the name of uh, Zhang G, I believe was his YouTube name. And he had the bolt modified, so instead of having it back here, it's moving it up here and it was bent. And he seemed, he's a lefty shooter. And it seemed to work fine for him. He's a Australian, which is where I saw the stock. Uh, see, is it? No. He's one of the people I looked at on YouTube, though, that had the stock, asked him a few questions. Next. Um, obviously, a pro is the fact that it makes it shorter, so that means there's no real problems to, or it makes it, what is it, sorry, losing my train of thought. It makes it shorter, therefore it's cutting down the length, it'll make your swing easier, 
so that's good. Um, the spring recoil pad, it fixes, originally on these stocks there were recoil problems that were people were reporting of, so you put that in there and it seemed to help. Um, I haven't shot it yet, but I feel like I'm going to take a face full of metal when I do, so I'm going to put on some kind of pad up here because I really don't want to and that's going to hurt a lot if it does. And um, Now, the other main reason I got this stock, besides the fact that it has all the benefits I've just listed, is the fact that it's supposed to dramatically increase recoil, like, or not recoil, duh, sorry, dramatically increase accuracy a lot. At 100 yards on their site, they claim it put three of the shots in roughly about the same hole, so it came out with a grouping of about one inch. I do not know what kind of military, or ammo they used, but if that's true, that means it's essentially the accuracy of a Remington 700, which is awesome, and I have no problem with that whatsoever, I like that. And I feel like that's a huge benefit. If it actually pulls this off, it would be well worth the money because it's still cheaper. The Remington 700 runs anywhere from $700 and up. This total, the oh, uh, I didn't get enough price either. The stock itself is about $315. I think it was $350 with shipping, I believe. Expensive, yes. The rifle itself was $400. They're not $400, $100. Total $400 like this package together but that still beats a Remington 700 and other bolt actions if the accuracy holds up to what it's supposed to if it doesn't then it's just a big waste of money and I want to return the stock because that was useless so that's why I got the stock was because I like the things it has to offer um, once again I do not like the noise factor I don't like the fact that this uh, top rail is out of spec you have to get special scope rings but um once again this is more of an out of a box I have not shot this yet so I do not know how accuracy is I don't know quite a few things about it so until then uh, this is pretty much all there's going to be on this stock from me I don't know I mean something in the future would be cool to put like a different colored paint job on there I'm not sure I like black because it kind of stands out we'll see Alright, so this has been the Marines Man. Um, this is my review, or uh, out of the box impressions that I have for it. Let me know what you think. Uh, obviously, I mean, it looks like a freaking alien gun. But other than that, jeez, my bad, knock the tripod. Other than that, I mean, it's pretty cool. So, it's heavy. Yeah, I don't like the weight. But it gives me enough capability where I think it, uh, I think it's better than what it was originally. It's not too thick, it's relatively thin actually. Back here, I wish it would be this thin all the way down, which it could be, but they have a bench rest capability up here for sandbags, I'm assuming, which is why it's fat on the bottom. And once again, it's relatively thin back here, too, so there we go. This is the Marines Man signing off.